So quick catch up. Jesus was born. He did a lot of awesome things while he was on the earth. Then he died, which was a really terrible thing. But then he rose again. And after he rose again, he told his friends, the disciples, that they need to wait for the Holy Spirit. And when they receive the Holy Spirit, they need to go into all the world to tell everyone that they can about him and about what he had done. Then he went to heaven and the disciples were alone for a moment, but they did, they received the Holy Spirit. And when they received the Holy Spirit, things got wild. Suddenly, fishermen were talking to whole crowds of people. These normal guys, these normal disciples were going around and praying for people and they were being healed. And thousands and thousands of people were believing in Jesus. Last week, we heard about Philip who went and told a guy from Ethiopia all about Jesus. And then in enters today's guy. Paul wasn't one of Jesus' disciples from the beginning. In fact, he was pretty much like anti-Jesus, like as much as anyone could be. His name used to be Saul, and he would actually go around like wanting to hurt anyone who said that they followed Jesus. Like, like, I mean, proper hurt. And then one day, Jesus appeared to him while he was walking down the road, and it completely changed his whole life. And then he became like one of those disciples going around the whole world telling people about Jesus. And he had a really interesting encounter one day with his friends. And we're gonna check out today's epic story. And then my mom said, take out the trash. And I was like, no, that's not the right look. <laughs> and then my mom was like, take out the trash. And I was like. There you go, yeah, do it that way. And then I was like, and then my mom was like, Andrew, take out the trash. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> dude, this is the worst hat yeah. ever. Oh, we're working with the amateurs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then my mom was like, hey, Andrew, take out the trash. And I said, <laughs> no problema, muchacho. Of course, I'll take out the basura. A little Spanish for you, I know. Andrew, that's literally my hat, though. Okay, no, it's not. Yes, it's it is. No, no, no. No. I, guys, I, guys, guys. What? We're live. We're live right now. No way. <laughs> no. Dude, he's <laughs> always cracking these oh, jokes. Man. And I just... <laughs> the, red... oh. the red light's on. And, uh... <gasps> oh, no! What's up, guys? I'm Mr. Gabe. And I'm Mr. Andrew. And we're here to tell you... An, an epic, epic story! story. Today's epic Bible characters, Paul and Silas. Now, Paul and Silas were some pretty cool guys. In fact, the Bible calls them apostles. What? No way! I always loved grammar, so they were apostrophes, right? No, no, no. The word is apostles. Oh, apostles! I love possums! Here, possum! Here! Ah! Ah! No, they were ah! apostles, which meant ah! that they went around telling people about Jesus. Makes more sense than possums. They didn't stay in one place for long. Instead, they traveled all over the place, telling people about God's word. Excuse me, sir. Where is your passport? How are you going to get on this plane without a passport? Actually, it's right here. Uh, this is not valid, sir. And uh, where are your suitcases? I didn't bring any suitcases. Excuse me, sir. You left your bags unattended in an airport? Uh, hold, please. Hey, Phil. You have a possible code blue. What are you talking about? You, you, do you even have your ticket? I bet you don't even have a window seat. How many times do I have to tell you? We're out here telling Bible stories. They didn't have planes, just horses and stuff. <coughs> okay, so one day, Paul and Silas on their horses mm. went to a place called Macedonia. Macadamia? I love these cookies! No, mm. Macedonia. I don't think I've heard of that flavor. Is it? Is it like a new kind of flavor? Is it new? I just... While you think of that, everything was fine, but suddenly the day took a little bit of a slight shift. It got a little weird and something happened. A woman began to follow Paul and Silas around. Hey, you guys, I'm a lady. It wasn't like that. This lady was really no good. She was wicked. Hey, you guys, I'm a lady. The Bible said she was demon possessed. <laughs> It even says that she was a fortune teller. Ooh! Ooh! I can see your future. I predict you will be slightly 
taller than me. <laughs> oh, and what is this? Underwater, a fish, a salmon. Oh no! <laughs> this lady was super annoying. She was yelling at Paul and Silas. <laughs> now, everything was fine at first, but suddenly the day took a little bit of a slight shift. It got a little weird. Something odd happened. A woman began to follow Paul and Silas around. She was trying to distract them while they were preaching. Hey, hey, look over here. I'm not touching you. And she was even starting lies about them. Hey, Justin, I heard he's a possum. <laughs> Let's just say this lady was very annoying. Hey, you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? No. <laughs> For days, <coughs> for <coughs> Are you done? You said that she was really, really annoying. She was annoying them, not annoying me. I am so sorry. Well, well, continue your story. For days and days, this lady was following Paul and Silas around being very loud and obnoxious. Finally, Paul was fed up. It was becoming a really frustrating day. So they decided in that moment to take care of business. Oh, really? <laughs> what was that for? Well, here's the thing. He punches her in the face. But here's the thing. She was a fortune teller, so I mean, she should have seen it coming. They didn't punch her in the face, but the day did not get any better. It started to get pretty rough. There were some guys over on the side who were watching Paul and Silas, and they didn't like that they were teaching people about Jesus. Hey! We don't like that you're teaching people about that Jesus fella over there! So they decided to grab Paul and Silas. Hey, come here! Put them in the marketplace and beat them up. Oh, really? What? Pull in the chopper! Ammunition! Why in our Bible stories do you always resort to blasters? Just punching. Just punching? Can I at least do one blaster? Okay, fine, but just one. Oh no, I can't see. But wait, this means all my other senses are heightened. Gabe, I can tell that right now you had a bean burrito last night. Oops, sorry. Oh, that's better. After that, they grabbed Paul and Silas and they threw them in jail. And then the guard shut the door. And he put chains around their arms and their legs. Shing, shing. Ah, I can't move. Okay, this has become a really, really bad day. It was obviously very frustrating too. Paul and Silas were trying to share the good news and tell people about Jesus, but instead they were bound up in jail where water was dripping everywhere. It's kind of smelly. Little rats are running all over the place. Ooh. Oh, 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 no, that was Timmy! Oh, man, what is he gonna do about taking care of his 300 kids now? I mean, Tina, Greg, Tony, Mark, oh. It was not a good situation. And Johnny, Alberto, Frank? I mean, oh, we can't forget about Bill either. Now, here's the deal. Paul and Silas could have gotten frustrated. They could have complained, and they could have had a terrible attitude. But instead, they decided to do the complete opposite. In that moment, in the middle of the night, they decided they would praise God. They lifted their hands and began to worship. And at that moment, the walls began to shake. Whoa! The floors began to tremble. The jail cells around them began to rumble. They were in the middle of a huge earthquake. Mom! And then every cell in the place opened up. Yeah. And Paul and Silas's bands were loose. No, no way! I'm free! Not only were they free, but the guards saw what happened. He saw that they praised God and they were able to lead him to Jesus as well. They got him saved. They could have complained or made the decision to have a bad attitude, but instead they chose joy and praised God. Andrew, where are you going? This is a closed room. Paul and the disciples saw a lot of awesome things happening. They saw people healed. They saw people who couldn't walk walking again. They saw people raised from the dead. They saw incredible things. 
but a lot of the time they had a lot of struggles. He was put in prison. I mean, prison is not exactly like the Ritz Hotel. It was hard and sometimes he got beaten up. They went through some hard things. But the one thing we see over and over and over again in all these disciples stories is no matter what they faced, whether it was good or bad, but especially in the bad, the Holy Spirit that was inside of them, he gave them joy. They had God's spirit with them no matter where they were, no matter what happened. And they were able to face everything with joy. Joy is a really awesome thing and we don't see a lot of it in the world today. Joy is something that comes straight from God. And it's something that you and I can have, no matter if we're having the best day of our life or the worst day of our life, we can have God's joy that remains with us no matter what. So this week, why don't you ask God to help you to have joy, whether it's just a normal average school day, whether it's a really bad day and everything's going wrong, or whether it's a really, really good day, that you can have God's joy inside of you no matter what. And we can pray about that right now. Lord Jesus, thank you that we can have joy because where you are, there is complete joy. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that is always with us, who gives us strength and gives us the right words to say, and also gives us joy no matter what we face. May we know that joy and may everyone watching today experience that joy in their lives, no matter what they face. We ask this in your holy name, amen. Awesome guys, may you have a joyful week and we'll see you next week.